Now, um, I've seen photographs of New Delhi. In fact, I have a textbook where the cover of the textbook shows a New Delhi street that's full of traffic, little bits of animals, I, know, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Um, is that a stereotype or is that really what it looks like? That's there? a stereotype, but that's one of the stereotypes that actually live to like actuality, like if it makes sense, like, you know, like it's real. You moving here, even though, you know, people don't really follow jaywalking as a rule and stuff like moving here, like I realized like you can't just cross the street. You're going to get hit like, you know, over there, people will stop for you. Like there's cows in the street, animals, people, you feel me, fruit vendors, stuff like that. But certain cities now is changing. New Delhi, Bombay, all the major cities where it's investment, multinational companies coming, big brands, malls, stuff like that. It's definitely changing now, you so know? So to a certain degree, cities in India are being gentrified. Yeah. Just like how in LA County, so much is being gentrified for the Olympics and you know, just for overall, it's the same way how India is being gentrified, but India has been gentrified. It's been a process that's been ongoing for about 10 plus years now. Now in, in New Delhi, are there parts of the community that are ghettos and they have cliques and kids usually grouped together and get into yeah. fights? Yeah. Is there sort of that type of culture there as well? It is, but it's not if that makes sense. Unfortunately, in India, we grow up going to school with Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Sikhs, the people that wear turbans, you know, they're over from Punjab, and um, even Christians. People don't know that there's actually a, like a real diverse makeup. So growing up, ironically, a lot of the fights and a lot of the bullshit, for the lack of a better word, happens in India over religion. Wow, with the young people? Yeah, even with the young people, they just, you know, it's a lot of uh, propaganda. You know? So there's a lot of kids that may be um, Muslim and the um, let's say they get into it with, the, with kids that are from another background? Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate because we I didn't grow up like that. But now leaving India five, six, seven, almost ten years, I'm starting to realize and know like, whoa, like it's the violence for the most part has been religion based because growing up, violence wasn't more than, you know, it's normal stuff, people get into fights. It, was, it wasn't organized. Now, so. what's, um, what's the access to weapons like in India? There are a lot of guns, revolvers, semi-automatic weapons. The revolvers, for the most part. You know, uh, I call them Abraham Lincolns. <laughs> but, you know, in India, not everybody has the access to a weapon. So that's, it's a good thing and it's also a bad thing because India is extremely corrupt. It's not like uh, it's not like America. You get pulled over, you could give somebody two hundred dollars and really go. So in America, you can't give nobody two hundred dollars. That's another charge. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's not gonna work here, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's not to say there's not corruption here, but it's a different kind right, of corruption. Right. Right. On different levels, yeah. you know. So, how often would the religious conflict between uh, youth become deadly? I mean, it depends because there's rural India and then there's, you know, the gentrified India, for the lack of a better word. Like, that's the new India, you know? That's for people like me. Past 90s, you know, 97, 98, like, we're growing up in multicultural environments, multicultural communities. We grow up learning about, you know, different cultures outside ours. So we're way more open, if that makes sense. But in rural parts where there's a lack of education and a lack of just, you know, basic understanding of, you know, we're all human, you know, it's way more than it is in major, like major cities. Like in major cities, we grow up, you know, going to school, make, even if it's like a, you know, racial thing, we make fun of each other and get over it. It's not how extreme it is in rural places because, you know, they're more, they're prone to fall like, you know, quicker to age and like political agenda, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think we uh, have the same thing here in the United States where in the rural parts, uh, there's a lack of education, there's a lack right. of openness. Right. But in the city, in the metropolitan areas, when people are more advanced. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, um, is there an official religion in New Delhi? Does the no. government have an official religion? So this is what's kind of interesting, you know, um, certain political parties, they favor or they're based 
are funded by certain religious groups or religious organizations that favor a, part a particular religion. So, yes and no, you know. I would say, say the Congress, for example, like the Congress is, in my opinion, probably non-biased or non-religion based. But then there's other ones which are religion based, but they're not really wrong either. They're doing good for the community. So it's like super subjective, you know. It's not the same like it, it is, but it's it's more like they div like people want to feel like they're being divided so people could rule over them in a way. Okay. And um, what is the, the religious belief of most people in the city parts like New Delhi? Is there a, a majority type of religious thought philosophy? No. Because, you know, it's uh, like I said, like even if even if you go to a public school, you there is a 99 percent chance you're going to school with even white and black people. So, you know, moving to America wasn't like, oh, you feel me? It wasn't as surprising to me because growing up, I got used to diversity. You know, in my country, it's all like over 20 languages and over 200 dialects, essentially. So I've, you know, since a kid, I've ate different types of food. I've been to different, you know, parties or people's houses, embraced their religion. So to me, in my mind, we're all one, you know. So what is um, your favorite type of uh, food, Indian food to eat that you don't, that you miss, that you don't get here? Actually, I, <laughs> you could get all the <laughs> Indian stuff here now, you know. Yeah. America's advanced with that, you know. There is an Indian community in L.A., so, you know. What do you recommend food-wise? Vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Whatever your, your preference is. Uh, butter chicken. It sounds disgusting, but it's not. It's not uh, chicken actually cooked in butter. It's just like a gravy that's kind of buttery. It's creamy gravy and it's chicken. And in India, are, are the chickens mostly uh, farm raised? Yeah, yeah, for the, for the most part. We don't, like, now it's kind of changing with the multinational corporations coming in. But before that, it, I mean, for the most part, it's just, you know, very hand to mouth. Even the fruits, there'll be vendors that come to your house and they'll walk around and you could actually buy it like that. It's not actually a grocery as a system. So you're getting um, fresher food for the most part because here we don't know where our chickens come yeah, from, right? Yeah, we don't know where our, <laughs> where our food is, you know, grown how, with what, uh, and you know. Uh, with what chemicals? I, yeah, I don't, I'm assuming that the the farm the farm grown chicken in India doesn't have as many chemicals and hormones. Maybe none at all. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can't say for sure, but you know, it's definitely it's more hand to mouth. You know, or at least when I lived there five to seven years ago, it was more hand to mouth. It's changing now though because they have you know grocery stores and grocery uh, grocery outlets and stuff. So it's definitely becoming more modern. But for the most part, it's uh, in India, a lot of people do agriculture, you know, if you know, like Compton has an agricultural history, too. So that's why I kind of understand certain stuff like in India, many people that uh, fall below poverty line, they're farmers, you know. So I understand that system and I understand how the companies come in and change stuff up.